Dave Johar once again for the Boxing Voice. Pleased to be joined this time by Ryan Robinson. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing good, my brother. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, we've had a few internet connection problems, but hopefully this time it goes smoothly, which should be, which should be good. Um, yeah, yeah. Just going on to your career, the last time we saw you out in action uh, was pre-COVID, so February 15th, over at the York Hall, uh, to be exact. Um, we're now approaching a year since you since you last fought, still holding an unbeaten record, um, still well-travelled as well. Um, what have you been up to in, in that year? How have you been keeping fit and still keeping active? Uh, just taking over, staying disciplined. Uh, like I said before, it cut out. Um, <laughs> it's more about the discipline, just staying disciplined, trying to eat right, trying to run and keep myself like reaching certain limits, like, oh, okay, three miles one day, five miles, trying to push myself like in any other, in any way, but it's just about staying disciplined to to the art, man, and, and the lifestyle. You know, it's the most I can do at this point. Other than that, what, you know, other than that, it's not, nothing else is in my control. Only thing that's in my control is what I do with my body and, and my time while I've got so much on my hands right now. So I try to stay dedicated to the lifestyle and, yeah, that's the main thing. Good stuff. And um, what was going to be the plan after that that victory? I mean, you and you, you still train at the Peacock and stuff. What was going to be the the next sort of step forward for you after February? And obviously, the COVID situation happened. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Sorry to cut you out. Yeah, we was actually looking at a title fight in France against a super middleweight undefeated guy. I think he was like eleven and all. Um, and they showed they, I walked in the gym they showed me the guy I looked at him I said I'll beat him you know what I mean I'll beat him let's go where we go go France okay let's go Paris let's go let's do it um, but uh, they put my name forward for that so that was meant to be my next move that was going to be in April so we had time to, to to prepare for that so that was really all I had in the line I was going to beat that boy and take his title and bring that back home and then and then get the ball rolling from here because people don't respect you if you ain't got a title nowadays, you know? The politics is crazy. Yeah, <clears throat> the British Boxing Board of Control said as well that they're looking at resuming stuff, um, possibly mid-Feb, all being well. Um, so thinking on, on that sort of basis, have you guys got a plan for this year for yourself um, in terms of, is it going to be round about when you're next in action, March or, um, or April? Well, I I don't feel like there. I don't feel like there is a plan. I don't feel like nobody can plan anything. You know, I think that's one thing that this past year has showed us. You know, um, trying to plan and expect things to be right for here, to be ready for this. It's, that's just not how it's going right now. So, like I said, as far as I can control, I can't control COVID, government, nothing. I'm just staying ready. You know what I mean? I'm just staying ready. My abs is still on display. Like I'm in shape, man. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not peaking, but I'm in shape. You know. Um, so. Let's see. That's all I can really say is, is let's see. You know, all I can do is sit here and, and just stay ready. You know, especially especially when you're not contracted and stuff, it's a bit more difficult to get out there. You know what I mean? So you just got to sit down and, and just stay ready. You know, let them think they're going to catch you off guard. But I ain't never sleeping. I'm always, well, I'm always awake. I mean, your stable mates over at the Peacock as well, um, since... Mm -hmm. You know, last year was it was a big year for Denzel, um, and, and yeah, it's proud of him. Um, which was which was absolutely fantastic for the boys over there. It's a good stable as well, isn't it? Because if one of you win, it's like you all win. Um, and unfortunately, with the with, with the loss of um, Triple D as well, um, have you reached out to Triple D? Is he is he is he keeping well? Is he doing all right? I haven't actually reached out to Triple D. Um, no one has really been able to get hold of him. You know, he's. Mm -hmm. You know, he's obviously looked after by by Martin and those guys. But we've been asking about him, you know. Um, that's what we can do. I asked him in the early days before he had, knew what was wrong with his eye, but I haven't actually checked on him since, you know. But um, all I can say is I hope he's doing good. You know what I mean? He, he, he shouldn't be too down on himself about that performance, you know. Um, but as soon as we see him, we speak with him. But, yeah, he's not the easiest person to, uh, to just contact. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine. And in terms of um, 
yourself and, and your career, you, you've in six fights, you've it's fair to say you've travelled a bit around the world as well, haven't you? Getting experience and stuff as well. Um, do you do you miss going around as well? Because you, you you're a man of the world already in, in six fights, aren't you? Uh, yeah, man. I, 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 my whole boxing career has, has been a, of a nomad nature. You know, I go, I go everywhere by myself. I sit in there in, in other people's backyard by myself and hold my own by myself. So I do like, I, I do gravitate to traveling. But, you know, uh, there's only so much you can do being on the road like that. So as much as I like it, you know, that's just, yeah, that's just a fantasy, man. Maybe, maybe when, Maybe when my accolades reach a certain point and I can say, yeah, I want to fight in this place, that place. But until then, I just got to, you know, just work with what I got and I'm home, you know, I've got to stay home. But I do miss it, you know. I do miss um, being out there, you know, seeing new things, you know. The same thing every day is a bit mundane. So, you know, it's only so much you can take. Yeah. And have you been keeping an eye on the, on the world rankings as well and also the, the domestic level? Loads of great fights have happened since, haven't they? To be fair, with Canelo sweeping up, and you know, even at British, yeah, Joe Saunders and stuff. What, what, what uh, how, how do you see the, the division? Domestic. I see the division, I see the division is the same way I've always saw the division. The division is wide open, really and truly. If you look on the domestic level, what fighters are you going to call out to me that are that are that are out there, like that are surpassing everyone, like yo, no one can't touch him. Everybody's touchable. You saw John. You saw John Ryder give Callan Smith a hell of a fight. A lot of people say Callan Smith lost that fight. Now this is this is the man that won the Super Six series. This is the man that fought George Groves and stopped. So it's like the division just seems very open. You know what I mean? Like it's it's wide open, and you know it's it's good that people like Canelo and stuff came up to the division. You know because he saw the same thing that I'm seeing. It's wide open. Who did he take the belt from? Rocky Fielding, another UK guy. You know what I mean? Who did he just beat for another belt? Another British guy. So for me, it's like, yeah, it's wide open. You know, and, and I'm here. You know what I mean? I'm here. You know what I mean? You've got Hugh Banks that comes up and down, fluctuates. You know, it's it's one of those divisions, man. Anything can happen. And that's how the super middleweight division has always been. From when Nigel Ben and all them guys moved up, it's always been this division that's it's just in the middle, you know what I mean? And it's 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 like, yeah, it's it's just one of those divisions that you got middleweights, you got light heavyweights, but then super middleweights is you don't really get too much fire in there, you know. It's very much like a mild division. I've never seen, I've never looked at my division and said, yo, yo, that's a that's you know, it's 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 wide open, man. Wide open. You know, um, to, but we were in a way to like the the, um, the cruiserweight sort of division as well, wasn't it? Because it's like in between yeah. heavyweight, and mm -hmm. then we've got this new one as well. I don't know if that's kicked off properly yet. The, the bridgeweight division, which is uh, yeah, they should. Have... Sorry, go on. What you gonna say, brother? No, you you crack on with that one. You, you had a trailer. No, nah, I'm saying like they should have done that division years ago. You know what I mean? They should have done that division years ago. So I, I hope they've got it cracking and stuff because. You know, it's not it's not fair for certain fighters that are trying to make a living out of this out of this sport, and you're too small, you're too you're too big for like heavyweight, but you're way too small for super for for a cruiserweight. But they put ten like ten keys in between. Like, that's that's crazy. That's twenty pounds, man. Like that's a whole like you understand like twenty. That's a serious gap, and it's not healthy for. The, the fighters that are trying to either drain themselves to go down to, to, to light heavy or trying to bulk themselves up to try and go to, to, to cruiser. So yeah, they should have been, they should have done that way. They should have done that way a long time ago. I'd be interested to see you actually, um, I suppose, signs up for it because no names have been branded about yet, have they? Um, mm -hmm. been kind it of will, do yeah, they'll get something involved. But I think with sanctioning fees and stuff and another title on the line, there's always something uh, up for grabs. Yeah. Another title. There's yeah, where there's money to be made, you know, they'll milk it, you know. Um, and that's no disrespect to to any boxing, um, like uh, I don't know what you would call them, any uh, commissions or anything. But yeah, there's money. There's money in that division. That's why they made it. 
They're not making a division for no reason. They know that there's heavyweights that are too small to be up, up there with guys like Anthony Joshua. They're just too small. You've got guys that, that can move down to that weight that will be happy. But it's just about the money. You can, like, behind the scenes, like, they're definitely going to be grafting people that they feel like can generate money in this division. They're going to have a belt. So now that belt's going to be vacant. They're going to, people's going to want a belt because like I said earlier, if you don't have a belt, it's mad. Like the way that, the way that you get looked at as a product in this sport is crazy. So that's going to be a brand new belt. It's vacant. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said, that's another wide open division, man. Watch, watch when you see these, these heavyweights, like, like, um, like Jennings and, and those guys that are short heavyweights, like they're going to go down. They'll try to go down. You know what I mean? If they can, they got weight to lose. You know what I mean? It's not like they drained a heavyweight, you know? So yeah. And he's in great shape too, Jennings. That's a side note, but yeah, no. I can see him doing it. I can, I can see him moving down. I can see him being one of the first to, to drop down there because he's, he's got, he's got the size. He's got the boxing IQ. The only thing that, kind of fails in more time is the hype. Like he's guys like Klitschko and, and all of these guys that are just, it's just hard, man. You know what I mean? To make your life hell. You know what I mean? Because they're doing what they're good at and a good big is always going to be a good little. I don't care how you cut it, chop it, whatever. That's just the way it's going to be. And you, you said as well earlier on, I think it was off camera before we got cut off or about you're comfortably making the weight at the moment, um, six fights in, but then who knows what, what, the future can hold for yourself, right? I mean, in terms of going up a weight and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. You yeah, yeah. Pardon? You're comfortably making it, aren't you? You're not like killing yourself making the super middleweight. Yeah, man. No, I don't look. I don't look the prettiest. You know what I mean? I do. I do look like. I understand why some people might look and be like. But if you see the anyone in the gym will tell you, yo, man, like there ain't no, there ain't no. There ain't no faintness in me. There ain't no weakness in me. Like we're we're doing sprints, we're we're doing sprints and stuff up until like the week of. Like there is no drainage or nothing. Me, I'm just making it as good as I can. It's mainly with the food. I feel like when guys struggle to make the weight, it's mainly with the food. But yeah, I'm making it comfortable now. But if if and when I have to move up, I, I'm comfortable with. It. I've been I've been in the gym sparring with light heavyweights. My whole, you get me? Like I, I, I done the amateurs as a seventy-five kilo, seventy-five keys. So I'm still the same weight from the amateurs, really. I was spying, I was spying with all the light heavyweights in the gym, you know. When I was living in Manchester, me and Lyndon we were sparring all the time, you know. Dan Aziz uh, over in Peacock. Pat Barrett. Yeah, I used, yeah. I used to live up there. I used to be in that stable. Yeah. Brilliant stable. One of my favorite stables. Yeah, no, yeah no. I mean them, them, them guys there, them guys there. I'm happy for them because they train hard. They train. One thing I will say is when you go up north, you want to like they train hard, man. Like that, I've never been so fit in my life training mm -hmm. up north, and that's that's saying something because I'm always in shape. But as, as I like peaking and all of that, man, they they're onto something up there. I really like the way that they move, you know. But yeah, down here where I'm at, same thing, militant. Militant. You can't not peak perform if, unless unless you just don't put the work in. But Martin's on you the same way Pat's on you. Same sort of militant sort of mentality. So you know, uh, yeah. So yeah, I was down there. I love it down there. Yeah, last time we uh, we came to see, you, I think you were you probably won't remember. But I think you were either training with Dan Aziz, and you had some yeah yeah you had some sparring in with him as well. Um, so it was a, it was a while yeah. ago, to be fair. So even yeah. Dan as well. Fantastic athlete, isn't he? And he's moved on to, I think he's they've commissioned. I don't know if you've seen it, but possibly him versus Ricky Summers. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, um, he beat Summers. Yeah, he beat Summers. He beat Summers. You know what? It's and it's about time Dan Dan got his got his um. You know what I mean? Give the man his shot. Like yo, man. Like it's 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 bad when you're boxing. You see your brothers really in arms. Yeah that work hard and they can't get fights, you're like, or they or they're not getting the titles, like, yo, like, yeah. Like he got the uh what did he win? Um the last belt. Um it wasn't a sub area. 
Andre, um, he beat, was he the British? It was the English. I think it was the English. It wasn't the Lonsdale. The English one. But the English title, yeah. I think I think it was the English that he won, and he just won it and vacated it. But anyway, like he's up there with the Craig Richards, and he's up there with all of these guys. You know what I mean? He should be fighting all of these guys. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes with it because, you know what I mean? His, his style is subtle, but it's, it's subtle pressure, man. I, I, like, I like watching him operate. You know, I like watching him uh, wear people down, you know? Better than, than me anyway. <laughs> um, what fight are you looking forward to, uh, to this year in terms of uh, as a spectator? As a spectator, um, man, I hope they make... Uh, I hope they make Crawford uh, Spence. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one. I I hope Dan gets a rematch with um, Joyce. I really hope Dan gets a rematch with Joyce because experience beat him. You know what I mean? He's, you know what I mean? Like that, like he should be proud of his performance, but understand? Yeah, you got things you need to work on. You're you're young, you're young, you're young fireball. You know what I mean, and no one can't tell you you can't go forward until you get stopped. So it's like, yeah, it's life, man. Trial and error, man. And I think he's gonna do good in the rematch because he, anyone can watch back that tape and say what he was doing wrong. You know what I mean? Anyone can watch that tape back and see what he's doing wrong. And I feel like he has, he will be able to change. Whereas I feel like Joyce is stuck in his in his style. That's his style. He's gonna come out with Joyce. is gonna be Joyce. Dan's still young, man. He got time, man. So I look forward to that that rematch if they make it. Um, Archie Sharp against uh, Zelfa. That'll be good. Yep. If they make you train, you if they make that fight, yeah. yeah, that's that's just personal for me. I I I, I want to see those guys do good, man. I got nothing but love for those guys. So I know that they've been talking about the Sharp thing for for a while now, from when them two was first on their way up. So now to see Sharp get his accolades and now. Um, They'll forget he's, and yeah, I think they're going to meet at the right time. So hopefully this year, you know, see if they pull that one off. I don't know there's so many, man. I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of all my brothers. I'm a big fan of all of them because we're all in the same boat. Yeah. So I always want to see anyone that, yeah, I man, I want to see, I want to see Lyndon. I want, I want to see Lyndon fight um, Yard again. Mm. I think that'd be a great rematch. You know, I think that'd be a great rematch. Yeah, it was the jab that separated it, wasn't it, to be fair? The, the, the power of the jab in terms of um, boxing from the first all the way up to the end. Lyndon was just like keeping him at bay with the with his jab, wasn't he? Control yeah. Well, um, yeah. But you know what? Like, And and I was saying this to people because I've been up there. I've been spying with him like, like yo, like, he's got a serious jab. Like, he's, one of, he's got one of the best jabs I've sparred with. Now was was his jab killing killing yard? No way. It was never killing him. But it was doing enough to keep him off. And that says a lot when you're fighting somebody that's fought on a world level. Because if 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 he could prevent you from keeping him off, he would have. So that it's just it's you know what I mean? You gotta learn, you gotta learn though, man. Like everyone's so concerned about losses. It's like mm -hmm. None of the greats were concerned about losses. None of the greats wanted to lose, but none of the greats was concerned about the losses when he got them. The greats mentality, when you look at them, the Marvin Hagler's and that, Durans and all of that, mm -hmm. oh, you beat me? I'm going to fuck you up next time when I fight you. I'm not, I'm not thinking about, oh, the, 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 like, everyone's too concerned about that, man. Take the loss and learn. Like, you know what I mean? Sugar Ray Leonard, Duran. Look at how he came back. Take the loss and learn. Lennox Lewis against... Um, uh, McCall or against Hasim, take the loss and learn. Lennox is is a legend. You understand? He is a legend, but he's only a legend because you saw him go through that and overcome that. He's not a legend because because he was just like you know. You know what I mean? So you gotta go. It's, that that is it, man. But everyone wants to keep the O and get the big paydays and all of that. But yo, man, we're fighters, man. Like you, you anyone can lose a fight. But, uh, anyone can lose. What's the, um... Did you watch the movie yet? The the, the, what one? the documentary, the the one on Lennox Lewis. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen it, but I was I was um with him when um when they was when they was handling him the footage and they was uh yeah, so I, I was looking through a lot of his old, 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 old footage with him. So I didn't actually watch it. Um I I think I might have seen most of it anyway. It'd be interesting to see how they piece it together. Um 
But yeah, I'll probably watch it in my spare time. Yeah, I don't think they're going to tell me now, and I don't know. <laughs> so, like, we reviewed it over on the site uh, a few weeks ago. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, you've seen it and lived it, but uh, definitely worth a watch. And, you know, we've recommended it to everybody as well. Um, yeah. You know, it's, this is a side note as well. Yeah. He, he, he's not in enough gyms in the UK, man. Yeah, you know I mean, how, how, how can you not respect the man? He's not in enough gyms in the UK. Like, people got Tyson all over their gyms, you know. You, you you're not you're not you're not representing your own like then he carried your flag even when you look even when england was was brushing him a bit like yo now nah, we're not really messing with you carried the flag he carried it overseas and he done what what hasn't been done and no one ain't done it to this day give the man his props he's a legend like but no yeah, I mean, he doesn't get doesn't get the respect i feel verbally that he deserves you know what i mean if anything yeah, it's a Sorry, shame. Go on. No, it's fine. I mean, it's a shame because he was the uh, the last undisputed heavyweight champion of, of the world. Um, and paper. and his last fight, his last fight was against a man that no one can beat for ten years. And yes. he was young. He he was against the young version of that man, not the old version that's doing the jab jab and all that. No, he was with the young, hungry Klitschko's. He was in there with them when it was young coming, like, you know what I mean? There was, and they went like, yeah, you saw the fight, you know? And that that's what legends do, you know what I mean? Look, just like a Bernard Hopkins and all that. Yeah, I'll get in there with you young boys, I'm gonna school you. Floyd Mayweather, oh, what, you want a shot at me? Oh, Canelo, okay, cool, I'm gonna school you. And if you beat me, props to you, because this is just a sport. But, yo, yeah, man, it's, it's the sport. Good stuff. Ryan, uh, just before we let you go, mate, um, where can people follow you? Where can we get more of you and, and follow your journey? And hopefully you'll be out very soon as well. Yeah, hopefully I'll be out soon. You know, I'll be upset if I'm not out soon, you know, but this is this is the game that I'm coming to learn. It's not necessarily about how talented you are. You know what I mean? If it is anything about that nowadays, you know, so, um, yeah, if I'm not out soon, you know, just follow me on, a, I'm only on Instagram, Conquering Lion. And it's the conquering is conquering lion spelled C N Q R N, like an acronym, conquering lion. And uh, that's all I'm on, you know. That's all I'm on. I don't really mess around on social media. It's a bit boring for me, and ain't nothing going on, you know. And if I, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you know I mean, so yeah, that's that's how you can get a hold of me. Um, yeah, man, follow the career, man. Follow the career. You know, we're trying to do big things this year. Trying to do big big things next year, trying to do big things till we're done, you know. But yeah, man, it's all love, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Anytime, anytime, bro. And we'll see you soon as well from from the boxing voice. You take care, and uh, yeah. let's all hope you're out soon this year, very very soon. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hundred percent, man. Let's hope. Let's hope, man. But we're here, though. We're here, man. Let's see what happens. Take if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, entitled betting shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.